What's going on YouTube? We're back with another tutorial. This time we've got my boy Glenn in the chair and we're going for a modern take on the traditional slick back. We're fading up from a low skin into a progressive square layer on the top and we're gonna cut the top with loads of texture to enhance that natural separation. All the tools I'm using in this video can be found in the link below and I'll supply you guys with links if you're interested. Before we get into the cut, please take this time to hit that subscribe button as every little helps when it comes to reaching a wider audience. All right, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. We're gonna start by wetting the hair through, making sure the hair is saturated throughout. Hair when it's wet will naturally stretch, so if you start the haircut wet, you'll need to make sure you keep a consistent amount of water on the hair throughout the haircut. We'll start this tutorial as always by mapping out the haircut. As we're disconnecting the frontal area, our first section is gonna be the frontal section. To find this section, you'll take a center profile line and then place your comb at the apex, the top of the head, and find where the head starts to naturally fall off at the front. It's from this point that you'll begin your section. Now take a radial section from your starting point and down to the recession. Repeat this for both sides and using the clip, tidy away your frontal section for later. Using the side of the head as your guide, you're gonna place your comb flat against the head and find where the head starts to naturally curve. This is known as the parietal ridge and this is where you'll start your horseshoe section. Clip the rest of the hair out of the way. You're gonna repeat this process for the other side. If you find your section is not as clean as you'd like it, re-wet the hair and start again. A clean section ends in a clean result. I've decided to leave the crown to fall naturally. This is so that I can see how the crown naturally reacts as placing the hair in any way that's not its natural fall will result in the hair springing up. As we approach the back of the head, you'll find the occipital bone. Pull the hair down to start your foundation guide. You'll follow this guide around the head, making sure you're always standing in front of your section. Once you've reached the first side of the head, you're gonna start by pulling the hair at an angle of 45 degrees. This is so that we leave some weight on the blend for the hair to comfortably push back. Once you finish this side panel, you repeat the same process for the other side. Rewet the hair and take a center profile section. This profile section will act as your guide throughout the haircut. Clip the excess hair out of the way to make life easier. Pick up your center section and cut to your desired length. You'll follow this guide from the frontal area and back towards the crown. This is your main guide, so be as accurate as you can. Now that you've cut your initial guide, you'll begin taking horizontal sections. Remove one clip from either side and start working front to back. In this case, we're keeping a square shape. A square shape means I will not follow the natural curvature of the head as I want to build some weight in the corners. Remove your second clip, re-wet the hair and take an off-centre section. Once the hair is sectioned, you'll repeat the same process. Once again, you'll separate the head in two halves by using a center section. As to keep a square shape, you're gonna over direct the hair from the top of the head and straight out to the side. This is to retain the weight on the corner, which we'll use later on. Repeat the same step for the next side. Remove your last clip and wet the hair. We're now gonna connect the frontal area to the rest of our shape. Keep in mind that we're gonna go for a progressive shape, so we need to keep the length on the front of the head. Again, taking a center profile section, you're gonna pull directly up and create a square line. Here, you're gonna find your previous guide and connect the pair. Take two more sections on either side of the head and over direct them into each other. Your first section is number one.
You'll then pull section two into one and finally three into two. You can replicate this for the other side. So that's your vertical cutting complete. We're now going to cross check horizontally to make sure our work's accurate. As you can see here, the left side of Glenn's head is slightly shorter than the right. It's small mistakes like this that can really unbalance your haircut, so it's important to get used to cross checking and being as accurate as you can. Now we're finished with our scissor work, we're going to add some natural separation to the hair with the razor. So to start, part the hair, take rough sections, and using your razor and a vertical cutting line, slice into the middle of the hair and work your way along the section. This breaks up the thickness of the hair and creates beautiful separation, making it easy for your client when it comes to home styling. Use this method throughout the top of the head and check how the hair is falling. If some places look thicker than others, go back in with the razor and even it out. This tool is the best on the market and really helps to give your haircut some character. If you're interested in grabbing one, tap the link to the right hand side of the screen and while you're there, check out some fantastic deals that Mataki are offering right now. That's our scissor work and texture finished, now we're moving on to the blow dry. Start by sectioning away your front panel by going from recession to recession. This is corner to corner at the front of the head. We're clipping away this section for later as first we're going to blow dry the bulk of the hair before we start to pump the front. As you can see here I like to use a cocktail of products. I'm using Crazy Ball Salt Spray to lacquer the hair giving a rough texture and then I like to add some boost to the hair by using texturizing powder. For a more accurate distribution of powder separate the hair and apply this to the roots. Alternatively shake over the hair and comb through as I've done here. Using your vent brush you're going to dry the hair on a medium speed medium heat setting and using your concentration nozzle you'll get close to the hair and follow your vent brush back to smooth the cuticle. If you rough dry at this point you'll create too much volume resulting in a messy finish. As you get to the frontal area you're going to remove your clip, pick the hair up at the root and concentrate your airflow into the base of the hair. This will give you some volume at the root helping the front of the hair to pump up. Finish off your blow dry by giving it a final blast and rake through with your fingers to influence that separation. Top is done. We're now moving on to start our fade. Place your comb flat against the head and find out where the head starts to naturally curve. This is known as the parietal ridge. You'll place your first guide, which will be your grade three or nine millimeter, just below where the head starts to naturally curve. Using a vertical cutting method, You'll follow up and through, making sure not to push in towards the head. Under your grade 3 or 9mm, you're going to take your 1.5 or 4mm guard, open your fade lever, making it now a 6mm, and using a scoop in motion, flick this into your grade 3. Now close your lever all the way, making it again a 4mm, and using the same technique, flick this into your previous section your 6mm. Attach your plastic grade 1 or 3mm and open your fade lever again making this a 1.5 or 4mm following the same fashion just underneath your previous section. I like to use this guard as it runs slightly shorter than my previous 4mm and it makes my OCD happy. Repeat these steps for the other side. Now that your sides are primed for fading, you'll take your zero and map out your fade guide. This is a low fade, so we're going to start by using one finger's width as our guide and create a line at the temple and behind the ear.
We're going to connect the pair and then move to the back section where we'll find the occipital bone and place the guide about three fingers depth underneath. Repeat this process for the other side and connect all lines. Taking your trimmers, otherwise known as a double zero, you're going to clear up the area underneath your zero, making sure not to overlap as you want to fade from your zero line and up. Soak the skin in talc, this helps to combat irritation and glides your fours along the skin nicely. Take in your foils, using a similar method, board out the area underneath your trimmers. If you struggle here and create lines with your foils, try using your foils on a downwards motion. This helps to blend in the skin line to the trimmers. Now we're taking our clippers with an open lever, making them a 2mm. Using our finger as a guide, we're going to go in at one finger's depth, creating a subtle line. You'll need to make sure you don't put too much pressure, as this will become more difficult when it comes to fading it out. Adjust your fade lever by two clicks or halfway open and begin knocking out a zero line. Follow this up and adjust your lever all the way closed and then notch it back by a little bit, making your clipper a 1mm. This should be your zero line, almost completely faded. If you can still see shadows or a faint line, push your lever all the way closed and flick lightly right on the line. You may even need to bring out your trimmers just to make a few adjustments. Don't worry about getting this 100% as we'll be refining the fade later on. A lot of the time you can get fixated on the perfect fade too early on in the haircut and lose valuable time. This is often what makes barbers late, so save your final adjustments for the refining stage at the end of the haircut. Attach your metal grade 1 or 3 mil and open your lever by two clicks or halfway. Work your way up another finger's width, again using your grade lightly to create a slight line above your 2 mil. Make sure not to create a harsh line as we're now going to be fading this into the top of your fade. Open your lever fully, making it a 1.5 or 4 mil, and using a light scooping motion, flick your grade into the top of the fade. Close your lever all the way, making your grade a number one or three mil, and begin knocking out your two mil line. You'll still see a faint line, so attach your two mil guard with a closed lever and gradually knock out what's left of your 2mm line. If you're struggling to knock out your 2mm line still, then remove your 2mm guard and attack it with a bare blade and an open lever. Here you can use your corners to really dig into your fade. Now repeat this process for the other side. So that's your fading complete. We're now moving on to clipper over comb to smoothen out our transition. Take a section from the recession and back through the parietal ridge, sectioning the top of the hair from the sides. This only needs to be a rough section as we're just removing bulk from the sides. Place your comb in at an angle and scoop out towards you. The teeth of the comb want to be facing a little towards you as angling this too far into the head will remove too much weight. Gradually remove the bulk, working in small sections. Try to imagine your end shape and using your clipper over comb, mould it to your desired finish. In this case, we're leaving some weight on the sides as we don't want to elongate the facial shape too much. You can either remove weight using an open lever, 2mm, or a closed lever, a zero. Using an open lever will leave you some room for mistakes as it will take less hair away. Personally, I use a zero as I feel like it's much quicker and cleaner. To graduate the blend, you're going to move up in small sections, each time taking a little less hair. Section 1 is bulk removal, section 2 
is to start your graduation and section 3 should be refining the last of the blend, leaving a smoother finish. This will not be the end of your blend, so if you feel like it's looking a bit choppy, don't worry as we're coming back with some scissor over comb to soften the edge. Repeat the same process for the next side before moving on to the back. As you reach the back of the head, at the occipital bone, you'll need to take extra care in maintaining a little extra weight. Depending on how prominent the occipital bone is, you're going to graduate carefully, making sure you don't overexpose the bone as you can leave the client looking as though he has a light patch of hair. In some cases, it's not possible to hide and you'll just have to do your best to accommodate. Smoothen the transition between your fade and blend, take your grade 1 or 3mm and with an open lever scoop into the blend using a C motion to remove any blemishes. Finally, using a mixture of scissor, clipper and thinners over comb, it's time to start refining your fade and blend. I chose to use the thinner side of my comb and with a level blade I remove any darker patches or blemishes on the fade. Really focus on using the rest of your time here as this is what will set your haircuts apart from the rest. Your finishing touch is your signature, so work on making everything as smooth as possible. For darker spots that you can't reach, use a chipping method with your scissors and vertically cut into the fade removing any darker areas. At this point you can choose to fix up your client's beard and sharpen the edges with the blade. For this style we've chosen to use Crazy Ball Stronghold Clay. This is used on top of our pre-styling products we used earlier in the video. I like to add paste at the end to give the hair some separation and create a bold final look. Styling is down to you and your clients. You may wish to leave the hair in a natural state, as even with the salt spray and texture powder, the hair has some hold and it can be reworked throughout the day. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found the content useful, please drop me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment. Let me know what you want to see on the next one and above all else, hit that subscribe button. Showing the channel some love really does help with the algorithms and gives our content further reach. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.